so these are the numbers p I'm going to write a of x h naught of uh, x a x a k x so the dimension of this uh, vector space of forms and I'm interested in uh, uh, canonical n files so uh, if you want really simple case uh, think x non-singular and kx ample so the, basically the first half of the talk will just be dealing with this situation and things really are very very simple and there's a complete answer here for all n and it depends on very simple set of parameters right and then uh, and let me then let me say for the second half of the talk I'm going to sketch very briefly what happens when x is has canonical singularities And then there's, uh, we're, we're, there's a, some kind of R here, some kind of global R, so that R K X, this is global index, uh, so that R K X is ample. <coughs> so uh, uh, ample and Cartier. And then uh, the issue will be uh, 1 over R orbifolds. And then uh, contribute to the plurigenera. So uh, I don't yet have a complete answer to this story, but uh, we're getting close to it, and we're getting at least representative uh, results. <coughs> and uh, so let me let, let me say this is supposed to be a, this is. A, a, most of this is a really very very simple story so let me start off with a very simple fact that everybody knows so this is a fact a fact you can explain to high school kids that the binomial coefficients I, I'm going to write a choose n I'm thinking of n as being fixed n is uh, some number that we fixed and the a is uh, uh, the a is a variable integer. So, for the different values of n, these are some functions. So, starting with a choose zero, which is one, and a choose one, which is a, and then the others that you know, these uh, are a, a basis, z basis for integral polynomial functions z to z so I've got a polynomial function z to z so e.g. I could do uh, I could do a goes to a squared that's a certain polynomial function that takes integral values on integers or I could do a goes to a, that's another polynomial function, and uh, if you do that, then these are perfectly good integral valued uh, polynomial functions. However, uh, they don't form a z basis because a squared minus a over 2 is also in, in integral. Right? And so, uh, you know, this z basis thing, you can uh, figure out a proof for yourself, or you possibly already know a proof. Uh, it's a very, very simple fact. Right, and you take, if you take these guys, uh, if I write, uh, if I just make this little shift, a plus n choose n, I can sum these together as a power series, t to the power of a. And uh, this is 1 over 1 minus t to the n plus 1. Right, so every algebraic geometry recognizes this. This is h naught of pn o pn of a and this thing here is the Hilbert series of the polynomial ring k of x naught up to xn right so uh, 
if you ask how many monomials of, de of degree A are there in these n plus 1 variables, the answer is a plus n choose n. If you put all of those together, you get this thing. So when I see this, I really think the polynomial ring. I'm really thinking when you multiply this out, I get product of product, a sum of products of terms, and I'm seeing every monomial in the polynomial ring once each. Right, and that's a proof of this uh, formula, and that's really a definition of the binomial coefficients. Okay. So let's, now let's uh, expand on this a little bit and say the functions invariant under i maps to 1 minus i. So in other words, let's think of i goes to 1 minus i. Uh, so you should sort of, eventually this will be say a duality. I'm thinking of i goes to 1 minus i as a function on the integers, and I say, among all these polynomial functions, which ones are invariant? Which ones are taken? Uh, and the answer is uh, uh, a plus m minus 1 choose 2m. <coughs> Starting with, so I'm going to call this a n, where n is 2m. And starting with, uh, starting with uh, a minus 1 choose 0, so that's the same as this function, right, and then a choose 2, which is a times a minus 1 is 2, uh, divided by 2. Okay, so uh, uh, when I do 1 goes to 1, a goes to 1 minus a, this is 1 minus a, this is now minus a, and the whole product, the product is the same, so it's invariant. Right, and the functions which are skew anti-invariant under a goes to 1 minus a, so these are the functions, uh, if I do a plus m choose 2m plus 1 plus a plus m minus 1 over 2m plus 1, right, uh, this, is, um, this is skew. Uh, so these, these also, so these, thing, these guys here, these form a z basis for symmetric rational part, uh, integral polynomial functions. Right? And these are for the same thing, the same statement for skew. So this is a completely elementary thing. And so you know you think about what this means when uh, a is when a is equal to one, this is two a minus one. When a is three this is 2a minus 1 times a times a minus 1 choose divided by 3 factorial. Yes, and so on. So, uh, okay, so uh, the, thing I'm say the thing here I'm saying is completely trivial, but uh, this is what, the, uh, this is what, this is going to completely answer this question. So, so I'm, I'm defining this to be a n when n is 2m plus 1. Right, so it's just a binomial coefficient with n here, and then some kind of messing around to make it uh, symmetric or skew symmetric. So let me just point out a minus 2 is 1 minus t. And a minus 1 is 1 plus t, and a 0 is um, t of 1 minus t. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 so, 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 sorry, this isn't. 
<coughs> uh, let me let, let, let me let me write out these things uh, in any case a1 is t plus t squared over 1 minus t squared okay so uh, so if I take these uh, if I take these guys if I take so I, I, I gave you this little trick here a way of thinking about all the binomial coefficients uh, all the binomial coefficients for a fixed n and thinking them as one generating series so if I do the same here if I do sum of uh, 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 now the symmetric guys a plus m minus 1 choose 2m t to the power of a sum for a equals 0 to infinity uh, you see, see immediately that this is uh, t to the m plus 1 divided by 1 minus t to the power of 2m plus 1 ok so the thing you're supposed to the thing you're supposed to think of here is this is projective space right of dimension n which is 2m and this is its polynomial ring, but uh, so that will be uh, that will be with one here. But if I had two m here, I don't have two m. I have m minus one. So it just means I shift down each term by this t to the m plus one. Right. And so this is a two n. Uh, a a m n. N equals two m. Right. And the uh, when I do the, the when I want to do when I, w I want to get the, to get the same formula here for those those guys, so and I'm going to do sum, and here it's a plus m choose two m plus one plus a plus m minus one choose two m plus one times t to the a. So I'm just taking these guys and making them into a into a power series. Then lo and behold, the thing you get out here is t to the m plus one plus t to the m plus 2 divided by 1 minus t to the power of 2m plus 2 ok and so this is a n when n is 2m plus 1 ok so you notice that this one is always divisible by 1 plus t the same, uh, the same as this one here is always divisible by 2a minus 1 <coughs> Okay, and uh, you'll notice that if you do a n and substitute one over t, right, and then multiply by t, and then multiply by minus one to the power of n, uh, possibly n plus one, then you get a n of t. Okay, so think about, for example, this first one, a zero. If I put one over t here and 1 over t, uh, 1 minus 1 over t here <coughs> then uh, to cure the top here I've got one, 1 over t to make that back into t again I've got to multiply by t squared on the bottom I've got 1 minus uh, 1 minus 1 over t to make that back into 1 minus t I've got to multiply by t and multiply by minus 1 so that's what I'm doing here uh, and then I get back to the same thing Right, so this is going to be called Gorenstein symmetry. Okay, and then there's a theorem which tells you the plurigenera of all n folds. So theorem uh, x non-singular canonical threefold, canonical n fold. Uh, this is just Riemann rock. There's absolutely nothing here going on. So k, uh, n is, x is non-singular and kx is ample. Then, uh, so you know, I define the PA like that. PA equals h naught of a kx and p x t. Its Hilbert series is the sum of these PA times t to the a summed for a equals zero to infinity. Right, the theorem says that this guy here is equal to sum certain integers, which are the invariants in the title of the talk, bj times aj plus qt. Right, so these are the, a, these are the a's, 
These are the A's that I'm talking about. And uh, I'm going to write J is congruent to N mod 2. So if, uh, if X is an N fold and N is even, then I'm only going to see the A2's in here. I'm going to see a sum of terms like that. And, and J is in minus 2 up to N. OK? And that's all. So these bi's are certain integers. Now I'll explain later that these can be expressed in terms of churn, churn numbers. And the q, this number q is uh, uh, 1 plus pg minus minus 1 to the n times chi. <coughs> right, anyway, the q is also a certain integer, a certain positive integer, a certain greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's the, uh, uh, that's the end of the statement of the theorem. So now I'm going to make some comments on the statements. And the comments say, well, you know, I was really joking when I wrote down this one formula here depending on n mod 2. So uh, let me write this out. This is equal to 1 minus t plus qt plus chi chi of x times t of 1 minus t plus beta 2 t squared of 1 minus t or cubed plus dot 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 k to the n t to the n plus 1 1 minus t to the n plus 1 Right, if uh, n is 2m and something similar, 1 plus t plus qt plus minus chi t plus t squared over 1 minus t all squared. Right, so these are just these, uh, these uh, a's and then plus um, beta 3t t squared plus t cubed over 1 minus t to the fourth <coughs> plus plus and then some final constant here which happens to be k to the n over 2 times uh, t to the n plus 1 plus t to the n plus 2 over t 1 minus t to the n plus 1 there it is Yeah? So, uh, you know, I haven't told you what the betas are. I haven't told you in detail what the betas are, uh, but I will in a while. But, uh, so, the, so the thing I'm telling you is that, that these invariants here, beta naught, uh, beta naught, beta 2, and so on, up to beta m over 2, Right? And the, the plurigenerate is completely determined by these integers. Right? And so there's something similar here. This one is called beta 1, this one's called beta 3, and so on. This one's called beta, uh, um, you know, it's still n over 2. Yeah? So, uh, so, so that, that's the first comment. So these a minus 2, a minus 1 contribute only to the power 1 and t. So, uh, you know, t squared onwards. Sorry, I'm going to say over c. <coughs> so from... Uh, uh, if I look at the, the coefficients of uh, t to the a for a greater than or equal to 2, then Kadara vanishing uh, says uh, the no, more no more irregularity uh, 
meaning that the, uh, the pleural genus itself, this H0 of AKX, is equal to chi of AX. So that's equal to the Hilbert polynomial. Right? And so uh, these, are these sort of just initial terms here that uh, you have to worry about, and then after that everything is going to be completely regular. Right? Uh, so what else should I say? Uh, the Q term, I mean, is doing this obvious function. If, you, if, you, if the Q term wor wor weren't there, it would imply that PG is equal to plus or minus chi minus 1. And uh, uh, so we have to allow for the possibility that there is some irregularity there, so I have to put in this term Q. Okay, then the next observation is these beta i are uh, integers. Right, so, uh, and they're essentially equivalent to the first m over 2 plurigenera. Okay, so if you look in this, if you look in this formula and say, for example, what is the second plurigenus? What's the coefficient? So the coefficient of t squared. So this is p2, and, uh, well, uh, the, beta, the beta 2 is supposed to account for that. There's some mess coming from before, and then the beta is just supposed to account for the rest. All the mess that comes from before is already, inti is already integers, and so therefore this b2 here is just an integral correction to take us to the right second plurigenus. Here also. Right? And so these terms here involve t, t squared, t cubed, and so on up to t to the m. And so each of them is contributing separately an integral amount to each of these first plur plurigenera. Right? And so uh, that's what you have to know if you want to know the, plur the, the, the plurigenus. The pl all plurigenera are just determined by these first m over 2. Okay, uh, so what else do I need to say? Um, so the beta i uh, correspond somehow or other to combinations of churn numbers. Right. And so what combinations? Well, uh, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm going to delay telling you that for a little while. But the, uh, the, the, uh, I've already, uh, the, the formulas that I wrote up there already tell you what beta, beta naught is. So beta naught is 1, beta 1 is plus or minus chi, and this beta n over, m, n over 2 is equal to, well it's k squared in one case, it's k, sorry, k to the n if n is even, and it's k to the n over 2 if n is odd. Right, and uh, you notice that the leading term is k to the n times a plus m minus 1 choose n, and so this grows like, this grows like a to the power of n divided by n factorial, Right, and this is, so this is the leading term, times, times kn. Uh, uh, right. So this kn here is the leading term. Uh, the, the, this is obviously, we obviously need this. In the other case, kn over 2 times a plus m, choose uh, whatever it is, 2m plus 1 plus a plus m minus 1. M plus one. So in exactly the same way, this gives this is the same the same. Right, the value of n is different, but it, it, the the formula for the growth is the same. So there's a k, k to the n over two here corresponding to the fact there's the term t squared plus you know t t n plus t whatever it is I can't read from here t t n plus t t n plus one there, and so this uh, so uh, I mean an obvious corollary of this is that k to the n over 2 is an integer. Of course everybody knows this from Riemann-Roch 
but uh, it, you know this, this is sort of quite striking that it comes out from this very very simple argument. Okay, so I stated theorem, so proof of the theorem, and uh, you know it's great when you can say it's obvious, isn't it? So uh, the uh, the Hilbert function, the, the Hilbert polynomial, chi of a k x has is an integral is integral polynomial function invariant or, or skew under a just one line say that's the proof so uh, this is uh, the result is really basically trivial. Uh, so uh, you know, I said I, I said not just that the, I said that these functions form a z basis, right? And uh, I intend uh, I intend this to mean, although I don't sort of understand how to give a proper proof of this, these betas here, these integers are um, pr primitive. In other words, I, I could. I can vary these betas up and down by one or two here, and I still get uh, and I and I still get perfectly good uh, n folds. So I don't know how to say this. I'm not. I, I, I can't claim to have constructed infinitely many n folds to verify this. But uh, so 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 these betas, the betas I'm writing down there, are certain churn numbers. So I've taken account of the denominators in order to make them integral and I claim that having done that they are now um, there, are no, there are no more hidden uh, congruences in them so for example uh, um, you know Todd 2 of a variety of a surface is uh, 1 twelfth of C1 squared plus C2 so C1 squared and C2 are churn numbers so of course I mean integrated over the fundamental class let's not uh, mess around they're churn numbers and so they're in Z but uh, this the, if I take C1 squared and C2 as my basis I don't have they're not primitive they don't form a primitive basis for the churn numbers appearing in plurigenera namely I can take one twelfth of them so this is chi of OX so uh, chi, chi of x, which is beta naught, and uh, this k squared, which is beta two, are primitive integral churn numbers. Right. So uh, I can vary the I can vary the beta naught and vary the beta two independently, and I still get. Uh, I still get three folds, and so I so I'm I'm saying that these that these uh, numbers here beta naught up to beta uh, n over two are uh, are integral combinations of the churn numbers, and uh, a base uh, a, a basis over z for those combinations of the churn numbers that are integral. Right. So it, it, uh, I don't know how much uh, time I should spend on this. Uh, um, so I told you about the leading term, the second leading term. So in the formula, I've said these beta i's are certain integers, but I've told you what the first guy is, and I've told you what the last guy is. So let me tell you in less detail what the next to last guy is. So it's. Um, beta n minus 2 a plus m minus 2 2 m minus 2 so this is not contributing to leading term um, or or so where this coefficient here is equal to k to the n minus 2 times 1 12th of C2 
plus c1 squared and this is a place where you're going to object where you're going to you know if I write that you feel happy uh, although it's not true if I write the truth here you're going to feel unhappy right so the consequence is the corollary of this is that uh, um, k so on a fourfold on a fourfold k squared times one twelfth of two c one squared plus c two is in is an integer right if you take k squared times the t second odd class then it's not an integer You're not necessarily an integer that is okay and so similar similarly for similarly for odd Uh, so well, you know that's uh, that's what happens if you look at uh, uh, non-singular canonical n-folds. <coughs> so uh, uh, you know the what the beta r what the beta i r in terms of in terms of um, <coughs> Uh, in terms of churn numbers leads to leads to the question uh, write Riemann rock so Riemann rock everybody knows I'm supposed to take churn of a churn clock character of a divisor I'm doing Riemann rock over a field of course and this is so I'm doing Hitzebrock Riemann rock I'm not doing Grotendieck Riemann rock yet. Let's rock Riemann rock. This is chert times t of x. In a way which is, in a way which is symmetric under d maps to k minus k x minus d, and which is integral and primitive. Uh, and so, uh, you know, lots of, uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that everybody here has written down Chur times Chur, uh, Chur of D times Turd and calculated the first few terms and so on. And uh, the strange thing is that the formula as a whole, so if I'm on an n fold and n is even, then the function I get is symmetric under D goes to k minus D. However, the individual terms in the function are not. And uh, uh, you know, there's sort of various subterfuges for getting around this, but uh, you know, there's an obvious one which is to replace the Todd genus by a kind of hyperbolic version of the Todd genus using hyperbolic signs instead of uh, exponential. Uh, but that makes, that introduces extra powers of 2 into here. And so, uh, uh, you know, there is a solution. Uh, you know, I have it sort of half written out in a paper. It's not I don't really know how to state it very, very cleanly. But corresponding to these A functions that I've just written out, so uh, our answer uh, uh, you can write T of D times T of X as a function of So let me do n even. I'm going to write it as a function of uh, these things called b, uh, let's say 2j of d, which is uh, d plus j minus 1k, d plus j minus 2k, d minus jk divided by uh, 2j factorial <coughs> well, so I, the thing I've written down here is just uh, any expression in d and k minus d which is which has the, this the invariant which is invariant under d into k minus d uh, 
Okay, times uh, times uh, coefficients. Uh, let, let me write B sub. Uh, uh, so I want uh, uh, something which corresponds to n minus two j. Right, and uh, this guy here is uh, this guy here is like Todd n minus two j. So he's like Todd minus two j in 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 this sense. He has the same terms and possibly some slightly messed up coefficients. So with uh, plus bits of k squared times Todd of n minus two j primed j prime greater than j. Right. So I'm not I'm not prepared to try to write out a correct formula here. Uh, I've decided that I'm going to combine these terms so that d only appears in these uh, pseudo binomial coefficients. And the result of doing that is that some of this messes around some of the other terms in Riemann Rock. So that's one of the reasons why this term is appearing here. Right? But these, uh, these coefficients here uh, are, are the integral churn, combinations of churn classes. So this is a slightly strange theory. This, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, uh, Riemann, Riemann rock has been online now for more than sixty years, and uh, I, I guess I guess there are people around who know this kind of thing. But uh, it was uh, interesting for me to discover it. Anyway, that's the that's the end of the of the easy part, so to speak. And so I want to, now I want to talk about. Uh, what happens when I take uh, when I take uh, non-singular x and I say to x with canonical singularities? So first, the point the the thing we have to understand is that non-singular is not enough. Right, and uh, I give an example, and at the same time. Uh, in the example I sort of uh, hint at, suggest at, the answer to this problem. How, how I'm going to write the general plurigenera uh, in, in these integral primitive symmetric terms. Right. And so, um, so what do I want to say? The uh, example. So, you know, this is about the simplest of these guys that you can take. Hypersurface degree 10 in weighted project space 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. Okay, so this is uh, one of these weighted projective spaces. Uh, <coughs> this is a hypersurface degree 10. This is canonical because uh, 10 minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 2, minus 3 is 1. Right. So uh, this is sort of gobbledygook, but what I really should be writing down is dx1 wedge dx2 wedge dy1 wedge dy2 wedge dz. These are the coordinates, coordinates on there, divided by f. And then here I have to multiply by uh, o of 1 to get something invariant. Right, uh, so, uh, so, sorry, let, let me write down here, homogeneous of degree 1. So this is a, uh, this is a, this is a form on the ambient space, it's really a differential form on the ambient space of the affine cone over x. I can take Poincaré residue down to the x itself and then I can divide out by the uh, Euler vector field. And uh, this guy here then gives uh, an element in the canonical class. Right. So x10 has 10 times, uh, sorry, has 5 times 1 half 1, 1, 1 singularities on P1, Y1, Y2. Right. So if I take 
if I take the locus given by x, x1 equals x2 equals z equals 0, then this intersects x10 in general in five points. And so there's a, there's a kind of line of half singularities in the ambient space, and my variety is hitting it five times. Right, and it also has uh, just one, one third of one, two, two singularity. Uh, sorry, this is, uh, it's an old habit, orbifold point. We're supposed to think of these as non-singular. Orbifold points, isolated orbifold points at uh, PZ. Right, so this is the point zero, 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 one. Right, and the point here is just that uh, the equation f contains, for example, x1 times z cubed. Right, I'm writing down a monomial of degree 10 here that appears in f and that contains this z here to the maximum possible power. And then the thing that's left over is an x1. And so, plus junk. Right, so when I do df by d when I do df by dx1 and I restrict it to z equals zero, this is not zero. This restricted to restricted to the point pz. This is not zero. Right? I'm doing d, 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 d by dx1 of this expression, and then I'm setting z equals one. And so this is not zero, and this means that z1 equals implicit function of the others. Right, and this means that the point PZ is a one-third of one, two, two quotient point, or orbifold point, with X2, the, 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 the surviving X, X2, Y1 and Y2, as orbinates. Okay? And so how am I going to write down his Hilbert series? So let's go back, let's go to this uh, formula that I already have in the non-singular case. And so what am I supposed to do? I, what I'm going to do is... So he's a threefold, I'm going to write down 1 plus t. He's got q equals 0, so I'm not going to bother to write down the q term. And then I'm going to write down the chi. So I want here minus chi times t over t one, one minus. Uh, what, 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 what am I supposed to write down? T plus t squared over one minus t. Uh, this one's degree three. I want degree four. At the, I'm sorry. What is it? Where, what's my marvelous formula supposed to be? <coughs> t plus t squared over one minus t all squared. Right, and then it's going to be plus k cubed over k plus some number here, beta beta two times beta three times t squared plus t cubed over one minus t uh, to the fourth. Right, and what I want this to do, I want p one equals two. Right, this is p g. That's the number of x's. So I want this to be two. So therefore, I've got to have minus chi equals minus 1. Right? And then I want P2 to be 5. Right? And so this is uh, the number of quadratics in the Xi, and then the number of Yi's. Yes? And so let's, let's do this. 1 plus T plus T plus T squared over 1 minus t all squared plus and then 2 t squared plus t cubed over 1 minus t to the fourth. But, so this is some power series some power series that's Gorenstein symmetric integral and starts with starts with 1 plus 2t plus 5t squared. It's just by construction. 
I told you how I'm going to construct chi, how I'm going to construct beta, and that's, uh, that, that, that's all I'm allowed to fix. So this is the initial term, and it controls the plurigenera. And then I'm going to write down plus a term that I'm going to call P orbifold of, to deal, this is dealing with the half of 1, 1, 1, and I'm going to write down 1 here. I want this guy to be Gorenstein symmetric of degree 1. And so there's five of these, because there are five of those orbifold points, and then there's going to be one of this uh, one-third of one, two, two, comma, one. Right, so I happen to know what these are. This is minus t squared over, sorry, one minus t cubed over one minus t cubed, one minus t squared. So this is five times this, and this is minus, and this is plus, and then it's minus t squared minus t cubed plus t to the fourth over one minus t all cubed, one minus t to the fourth uh, cubed. Okay, so what, what am I doing here? I'm allowing, because I'm putting in this one minus t squared here, I'm al allowing the Hilbert function now not to, to no longer be a polynomial, but to be a, poly a periodic polynomial with period 2. Here I'm allowing in a periodicity of period 3. Right? These terms here are not affecting the first two plurigenera that I fixed here. I fixed the two plurigenera, that was, uh, uh, that was in order to be able to use this formula here for the, that ap uh, applies in the non-singular case. Right. So this is doing, this is, do, this is, anyway, you can check that this is equal to 1 minus t to the 10th over product 1 minus t to the i, i in 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. <coughs> so this is just a little, a little calculation. You can do it on a scrap of paper if you, if you feel like it. I've done it on computer algebra now many, many times. So what are these functions? Well, uh, you know, the, the point I'm insisting on is that every term here is integral and is Gorenstein symmetric of the same degree. Right? So there's three here. You think of this, poly this t cubed as being a, a, a Gorenstein symmetric polynomial of degree 6. Because if you do 1 over t to it, you have to multiply by uh, you have to multiply by t to the power of 6 to get back to where you started. And the thing at the bottom is of degree 5. So the whole thing here is, is Gorenstein symmetric of degree 1. Right? And the, numerate, the, the denominator is a given expression. This is saying we're living on a, this is saying we're living on a threefold or isolated orbifold of degree 2. Right? So this is, uh, if you like, this is just the... Um, you know, the normal bundle to the orbinate or something like that, I don't know. Uh, <coughs> uh, anyway, so I'm telling you there's a recipe which allows me to write down these terms. Okay, so there's a general, uh, there's a general isolated, or this, this result is completely general for three folds, and um, uh, we're beginning to understand how to be able to do it for four folds and higher dimensions. So this is, uh, this, th these formulas are the, uh, you know, closely related to the ones that Chen and Chen and Chen used to prove our conjectures many years ago about the best, about the smallest possible threefolds. Okay, so the general result for threefolds, the general result for isolated orbifolds, So a general uh, looks like 1 over r of a1 up to a n. Right, and I'm going to uh, write here k. So k is the uh, degree of the canonical class. Right, so these are, these are, these are 
these points are polarized. I've got a, I'm, I'm living on a variety with a given sequence of sheaves here. I equals zero to infinity. Uh, so, sorry, sorry. I in Z. So I'm, I'm working on a prod. I'm working on a prod, and a prod has a braided structure sheaf, which is this sum of uh, which is this sum of all the OIs. So it's a sheaf. It's a graded sheaf of algebras living on X. It's essentially just the coordinate ring of X, if you want. <coughs> right. And I'm assuming uh, I'm I'm assuming that omega X. So omega X is in the same way uh, a direct sum of omega X of I. I and Z. I'm assuming that this omega x is isomorphic as a graded sheaf to O of k. Right, that's what I mean by this k here. Right, and so then there's P orb of uh, 1 over R A1 up to An with k here, and this is equal to a certain numerator. So here I'm assuming the AIs co prime to R. Right? And because I want isolated, the non isolated case is going to be trickier. Right? So this is a certain numerator divided by a certain denominator. The denominator is 1 minus t to the n, 1 minus t to the R. <coughs> and the numerator is uh, a polynomial in T, or sometimes Laurent polynomial, if uh, K is less than zero. <coughs> this is a polynomial in T with support in, so I want T to the power of C over 2 plus 1 t to the power of c over 2 plus r minus 1. Right? So it's an integral, polynomial with integral coefficients with support in there. Right? And so, what, so the c here is the co-index is n plus 1 plus k. So we'll just think about the case I'm doing here. I'm doing a threefold, so k equals 1 and n equals 3. So this c is 5, c over 2 uh, in, rounded down is um, c over 2, so 5 uh, is 2. Right, so I'm going to, I'm, my polynomial here, in this term here, this, this thing here is a certain polynomial with support in t cubed going all the way up to t cubed. Right, so here it's t cubed going all the way up to t to the fourth. Right, and so it's an integral polynomial in t with support in there and equal to, so which, in, which polynomial is it? It's inverse mod Now, I don't know which way to write this. This is product 1 minus t to the ai. Uh, product 1 minus t to the r. Uh, sorry. 1 minus t to the r of 1 minus t. Okay. So, uh, of course, I'm not, telling you this in, uh, I'm not telling you this in enough detail. What I say is this. <coughs> what I say is this. We're working, in, uh, we're working in the ring of Laurent polynomials with T. Uh, we're working in, if you like, just the polynomial rings with T, if you think of the K as being positive. Right? So I write down this 1 minus T to the R over 1 minus T. This is something like the cyclotomic polynomial of degree R. Now, if R were a prime, this would be exactly the cyclotomic polynomial of degree R. Right? This guy here is co-prime to this, and so there's an inverse mod of it. Moreover, if I take any sequence of integers here, uh, going of length r minus 2, these form a basis for residue classes modulo this. 
So in other words, I can take the residue classes like this, and I can shift them up and down into any support I like, as long as it's support R minus 2. And so I do that here. Right? And so, you know, this, this formula, you know, of course, if you, if you go back to my young person's guide of uh, 1986, uh, this formula is written down here all in terms of Dedekind functions. So Dedekind functions, you're, you know, you're doing a left shirt's fixed point theorem for cyclic group actions on orbifolds, and, you know, at some point you write down Dedekind sums, and the definition of Dedekind sums is as the coefficients of the coefficients of these polynomials. Uh, I, I, so I, I'm sorry, I'm exaggerating. <coughs> you could also uh, the Dedekind sums have have rational coefficients. Okay, so look, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm sort of getting overexcited and telling you things in the wrong order. So uh, you could check here this. The, I gave you this initial polynomial. The initial polynomial handles the initial plurigenera and possibly screws up the re rest completely. I don't know that. And then I have to add in these terms to deal with the orbifold corrections. Right? So you could, you, I'm sure you've all done the calculation just observing, t checking that this gives the right answer. Right? But let's think about this. So we, in, in this formula I can ask what is the leading term? So how does this grow? How do the coefficients of this power series grow when, n goes to, when a goes to infinity? Well, this term here grows like four times the appropriate binomial coefficient. So this looks like a, if I just left it like that, I would have something which appears to be a threefold with k cubed equals four. In fact, k cubed is uh, uh, 10, 10 over 1 times 1 times 2 times 2 times 3. Right? And so this is uh, 5, 5, 6. <coughs> right? And so what's happening here is I've got four. These terms here are not only handling the periodicity. So there's a, you know, this term here is sort of basically, uh, this is basically minus 1 8th of t over 1 minus t squared. Right, if I was just thinking of the periodicity part, it's this. It's, it's this, and then bumped up with a little bit of the global plurigenera, of the global k, k cubed here, in order to give it this denominator and the uh, numerator in this chosen interval. Right? And so uh, this, 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 this function is tricksy. These, these functions are, are doing something uh, doing something clever. Okay, I just want to say, I realize I'm over time. I want to say uh, one word about uh, how to do the general case. Uh, so, you know, this is work that's been sort of happening in the last two or three weeks at the same time as, uh, you know, queuing for boarding at air air airports and so on. So. Uh, 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 if R is an arbitrary uh, graded ring, uh, N, I mean N graded ring, with um, R naught equals K field, <coughs> then I can write down the pure genus, the, uh, the Hilbert series. Right. Corresponding to the grading here, there's a spec R and there's a C star action on this. Uh, this is C star. So uh, this thing here is of course uh, is of course first of all an integral function. And an integral function turned into a power series. And it's a rational function, and it's also a holomorphic function. And, we, and uh, this t, we should think of the t belonging to C star. <coughs> so, uh, 
So, uh, so if I take a little finite subgroup contained in this group C star, right, then these are, it's well known these are cyclic groups. So if you've got a cyclic group, it's best not to choose a, root of, uh, a primitive root of unity. Just think of this as some subgroup here. And so this, uh, this mu r, this, this mu r has a fix mu r. Right, so this is contained in spec r. And it's equal to v of xi. xi it's, so it's defined by xi equals 0, where all xi of degree not divisible by R. Right? So in this case I was asking where are the fixed points of the of the mu two? The fixed points are given by this one, this one, and this one all equals zero. And so inside the X ten, this is inside the affine code over X ten, this is one dimensional. Right. So PRT So if I think of it as a holomorphic function, has pole at epsilon in mu r of order the dimension of this fix of mu r. Right. I'm just saying something completely trivial. I'm saying that uh, if I have this polynomial, if I take this polynomial ring, I can. Uh, if I have a point, if I take one of these guys in fix of mu r, I can choose something, I can choose some t, uh, you know, I can do the, I can do the r maps to r by t to the power of, say, m times r, for any m, co uh, you know, co-prime to r, and then there's a kernel here, and a co-kernel, and these are uh, smaller dimensional rings. These are smaller. These are rings with smaller dimensional spec, right? And so I can, if I take out, if I take the, this Hilbert, if I take this function, I multiply them by fractional things. So my assertion is these, uh, uh, this rational expression, as a sum of principal parts at each of these poles, can be replaced by. A function like this, where each of these guys has been sort of, uh, you know, massaged into an integral function with the right support, with a, an appropriate support. So I'm only interested in the Gorenstein case. So, uh, you know, the, I can arrange. So in that case, this this function here has a symmetry. After subtracting off a leading, possibly irregular term, the thing will be symmetric under t goes to one over t, and I'll get the uh, I'll get these I'll get these types of results. So, um, you know, this forms a kind of sort of interesting stratification of spec of R and there's different strata of different dimensions plugging into each other and, uh, and so the, uh, the, 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 formula, the whole formula at the end is going to be just a little bit more complicated than this and at the moment we only know how to state it in special cases but uh, it's perfectly clear that something like this is going to work. Okay, so I'm sorry I went over time.